I just posted this on Twitter and it says there's something wrong with this article. Can you find it? I'm going to link it down below for everyone to check out. It's very important. More wrongful death suits uh, aimed at Kratom and the retailers that had sold it. This isn't the first one, but it seems like it's growing in number, not rapidly. All of this among the many different issues that we have, opioid crisis, fentanyl crisis, and obviously the economic crisis that we're all experiencing in present day. My name is Mike. Every week I discuss topics that I care about. Hopefully you find them of value as well. If you've been here before, you know the spiel. If you haven't, welcome. Today's Daily Dose is partly brought to you by Grass Store Cannabis Delivery Made Simple. Save a whopping 40% right now. Use the code daily at checkout. More links down below if you want to support the channel and know that it means a lot to me. So this story right here, the readily available herbal supplement Kratom is facing wrongful death suits. As you see, sev several families of people who fatally overdosed on the herb Kratom are now suing the gas stations and the vape shops and the bars that sell them. So a raft of wrongful death lawsuits has been brought against vendors of Kratom, an herbal supplement that can act like an opiate on the human body. It's sold at gas stations, yada, yada, yada. Peter Hayden reports from Southern Florida. He talks to uh, two family members specifically. Um, one is Cindy Ross. Her son, as you see, Max, had collapsed while walking home. He had a few beers at the mall and at some point a significant amount of Kratom, and they suspect it was extract. The medical examiner determined that the combination killed him which is kind of crazy to think, right? Um, we know that Kratom has been around in the West for 10 plus years. It has definitely grown in popularity since 2017. Um, people aren't dropping like flies. So that is really important to note. It's also important to note there's very little regulation. Of course, there's the uh, Kratom Consumer Protection Acts that some states have enacted, which gives some, you know, guidance. That's what we need. As an industry, we need guidance, proper guidance. I have no issues with uh, having some kind of regulation. It has to be sensible. It has to be reasonable. Um, and more importantly, it has to be accessible. It has to be accessible to all of us. We need to all be able to participate. And as of now, it's illegal to import Kratom into the country. However, it finds its way here. When it's here, it's being distributed in you know many different forms. Let's continue with the story. The next person that uh, Hayden went ahead and interviewed was 39-year-old Crystal Talavera, um, or at least one of her family members. She lived in the town over, and she was a nurse, a mother of four, and according to the lawsuit, on Father's Day 2021, her fiancé woke to find her lying face down on the floor, unconscious, lying beside her. Uh, her was a cup of hot coffee and an open packet of powder, a blank bag with the words um, marked, uh, what was it? Scrawled in black marker space dust is what it was called. It was a concentrated kratom extract. She ordered off the internet from a company in Idaho, which is now being sued. And I think they're seeking about $4 million or something. Beyond that, the FDA says, do not consume kratom. It's dangerous. It stimulates the same brain receptors as morphine. Could be addictive. They don't regulate it. They don't have much regulation. It's uh, it's been okay to label it as a dietary supplement, but they say it's not for human consumption. Therefore, there is no dosage requirements. They don't want you to put a dosage uh, requirement or information because it's not for human consumption. So therefore, nobody knows how much to take. But that's just one of the issues of several, I have to say. The reality is that if they can give us guidance, then manufacturers can follow that guidance. Uh, labelers can follow that guidance. And more importantly, um, we can have more visibility and transparency of where it's all coming from. It should start from the importation. You know, Making that legal can give us more clarity as to, okay, it's coming from Indonesia. Then it's being distributed to whomever. As of now, when they import, they're mislabeled. These container ships, 20-foot, 40-foot containers are coming into the country, and they're mislabeled as tea, tea extract, and God knows what else, right? So if it was labeled as Kratom, as it was uh, as intended to be, it would never be allowed. They would get seized. So importers 
and the manufacturers here in the States have to get creative to get it into the country because demand is rather high. So furthermore, I have to say from my 10 years of experience is it's very important you, you know, put in the effort, do some research, make sure that you know who you're buying from, what they're carrying, why they're carrying it, that there's lab reports and that it's as safe as you can possibly verify. It's, it's the least that you can do before you decide to consume something. Don't just look at price. Price is not um, as important as the cost of your life. There's a very small likelihood, and this is my opinion, and people will agree or disagree, and I frankly don't care, but it's my opinion that it's very unlikely that Kratom by itself is actually harming people or leading to these wrongful deaths. Very unlikely, I think. Even if we have like acute concentrated levels of alkaloids in the human body, even if that were the case, and I've seen several cases like that, um, it doesn't lead to death. It generally leads to um, a diminished quality of life and some health issues that arise that as soon as you stop taking Kratom in excess, your body begins to regulate once again, becoming healthy once again surprising isn't it so that's if that's if it's just kratom even extract should have its limitations but yet uh, people do go overboard with those and my general recommendation is if you're new to kratom then extract may not be right for you that's not a place to begin you shouldn't just you shouldn't start there if uh if a retailer is pointing you in that direction most retailers don't understand kratom well enough and they'd rather have you have uh, experience an effect on your first purchase rather than turning you to leaf kratom or a capsulized uh, leaf kratom uh, in fear that you may not buy it again. This is, I would think, generally the feelings they may have. They want to make sure a consumer is happy and that they get an effect. So if that is their end game, they will generally lead you towards an extract, maybe a low, low grade, low milligram extract. Still, if you're new, not the place to begin. But you can do whatever you want. You're an adult, right? Now, beyond that, we know fentanyl is being found in everything. Some of the first cases of fentanyl-laced cannabis was coming out of Connecticut. I've heard some stories out of Texas. Um, and that was just a couple of years ago. I imagine it's gotten worse. I was speaking with the FDA recently, a specific individual, and they were telling me they have increased concerns and an increase in cases where fentanyl is being found in Kratom. Yes, being found in Kratom, and that has them alarmed, and they are engaging the situation um, in the best manner that they could, whatever that means, right? Um, at the end of the day, the truth is that sensible regulation is not a bad thing, and there's several states that have passed the uh, Kratom Consumer Protection Act that gives some clarity and some guidance to manufacturers, importers, and, you know, and retailers. Uh, but beyond that, we need more, I want to say we need more help. We need more people to come on board and to speak up. Kratom is for the most part as benign as can be. I was talking with one of my very long-term climate, uh, clients going back years and she had a fantastic idea because here in Los Angeles, we have a serious drug problem and it coincides with the homelessness problem, fentanyl, methamphetamine, you name it. And we were talking about the future of Kratom because it's kind of unknown. Where is this going? Could it get banned? There's a lot of restrictions and a lot of uh, just a lot of friction um, when we when we're looking at the situation as a whole nationwide. And, you know, she said, man, this stuff changed my life. This stuff saved my life. And. I don't understand, this is her words in quotes, I don't understand why we don't just give some of these homeless people Kratom. Rather, what are we doing? We're giving them needles. We're giving them clean needles because we don't want them to spread uh, diseases uh, when they share needles. Well, Kratom is an option too. Why don't we give them Kratom? It can, it can, it's worth a try, right? What do we have to lose? And I said, fucking A, that's brilliant. That's a brilliant idea. Um, I'm very surprised it hasn't been explored. Why? I don't know. It's got to be substantially cheaper than um, sourcing all those needles, but someone's profiting off the needles. Whoever's distributing them, you know, whoever's contracted with the state to do so, 
is definitely profiting from that. Now, let's continue. You see more in this story here. Uh, the case in Florida is egregious. They had nothing on it other, other than what it was called as uh, space dust. And it's the poster child, uh, child for why we need regulation. Then we have um, McCurdy. You may have heard of him. He's you know quite prominent in this space. He's a um, medicinal chemist at the University of Florida. He's been studying Kratom for nearly 20 years, which is pretty exciting to hear that someone has even known about it for 20 years. Um, and uh, he's uh, gotten uh, funding from the National Institute on Drug Abuse. He says the plant shows tremendous medicinal potential interacting with novel combination of brain receptors and systems in the brain. And you know what he calls it? He calls it, um, uh, he calls it magical, for a lack of a better term that it's quite magical and remarkable how this is working in the brain and in the body and you know what it's doing. So in conclusion, everything will be link linked down below for you to check out, for you to read and for you to comment on. Um, you know, let me know your thoughts. There are many of us in this community who get outraged at bad news. We we are very supportive and strong advocates of Kratom for one reason or another. For some of us, it's changed our lives. For some of us, it's uh, improved the quality of life. Regardless, there's all these positives. When we hear negative news like this, we should speak up and share our experiences collectively. The reality is regulation is coming. The truth is that from the science alone, over 10 years of people using it widely, there haven't been a drastic increase there hasn't been a drastic increase of deaths and i think that is something to celebrate that is a very positive thing so therefore what are we seeing now why are people just dropping dead from kratom because that last story of you know this woman uh just facing down just face planted um with a hot cup of coffee and the space dust and like just dead that's isn't that's very bizarre. Kratom doesn't do that. It never has. So, bottom line, I feel like this is why I've developed, you know, my business the way I have, not just in store or online, but also the uh, the social media presence is for transparency, education, um, and to be able to show you, like, look, you can find me. I'm on Google Maps. You know where to find me. I do a lot of the hard work in advance so that you don't have to necessarily, but you don't have to just take my word for it or just trust me. You can read the reviews. You can look at the lab reports. Um, trust that I have tested every single product that goes on my shelf before I hand it to you. The purpose of this is to make sure that I'm getting something that is safe and that is clean and that is effective. There's a number of different things we're looking at. Those are the top three, safe, effective, clean. Um, so what else can I say? Research, figure it out. Don't just buy random shit online just because the price is right or just because you're curious. There's always going to be so many products online um, that just don't have the proper due diligence behind it of where the hell did it come from? We know it came from Indonesia. Okay, where did it, where did it end up from there? What did they do with it? How did they process it? Who packaged it? Um, so on and so forth. These are all things to be concerned about. And this is why um, sensible regulation can be handy. It, it could be very beneficial to everyone as a whole. When will it come? That I don't fucking know. Leave them down below. I'll catch you guys on the next one.